Well, I think Leo the Voodoo Doll approves of this beautiful king cake. Just look at that gloriousness. Absolutely fantastic. Layers. That is just beautiful. Hey guys, welcome to another special edition, I guess you could call it, of uh, All American Cooking. This is my buddy Leo. He is a genuine voodoo doll from New Orleans, brought to me by a friend of mine a few years ago that was down there. And this is my lovely niece, Rihanna. Say hi, Rihanna. Hi. She's a little shy. But today we're gonna be making a Cajun New Orleans classic dish in honor of Mardi Gras called a king cake. We're gonna take you step by step on how to make this traditional New Orleans classic in honor of Mardi Gras. All right, so the first thing that we need, uh, Rihanna, you want to read me that? What does it say? A half cup of milk. So we're going to measure out one half cup of milk into a small saucepan, and then one tablespoon of honey. Come on, honey. Get on out of there. That look like about a tablespoon of you. It's beautiful, right? All right, so now we're gonna heat this up over medium-low heat until it gets to around 110 to 120 degrees because we're gonna throw some active yeast in here and we don't want it to be too hot so that it kills the yeast. All right, so as this is heating up, we do wanna whisk this. We kinda of want that honey to dissolve into the milk so we don't just have this like clump of honey in the midst of all this milk. All right, so the milk is about 127. We're gonna go ahead and put it in this bowl, let it cool down a little bit. regular thermometer on it if we need to throw it back in to heat it up and yeah, we're at 124 so we're gonna let that cool down for a couple of minutes in the meantime we need to do what we need to melt some butter yeah. how much butter do we need to melt a wood stick. one stick full butter this is already fairly soft so this should melt pretty quickly but I'll go ahead and Cut it up into some smaller pieces so it melts a little more evenly and a little faster. All right, so our milk and honey mixture is now at about 112 degrees. Butter is melted, but we'll get to that in a second. We're going to add one package of instant yeast. We need to whisk this in or anything. You want to go ahead and do the honors while I get the butter out. Okay, so this is all whisked up. Now what do we do with this? Let it sit for five minutes to let that yeast start to eat up some of the sugars. And then how are we going to know when it's done? When it starts to bubble. Right, exactly. So we'll see this in about five minutes. And when the butter is melted, we'll show you what we're going to do with that. All right, so you can see about five minutes later, our yeast is bubbling nicely, devouring those sugars. So to that, we are going to add our stick of melted butter. Make sure that it's not too warm. And it is not, so it should be perfect. So my lovely assistant here will continue to whisk as we add the other ingredients that we need, which will come in the form of two eggs. No shell, no shell, no shell. No shell, no shell, no shell, no shell. Beautiful. And then we are going to add a pinch of kosher salt, about a half teaspoon or so. We are also going to add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Lovely. Next, we're going to add about a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And you know I am a fan of grinding it myself because it's just fresher and better. So with the microplane. Oh, can you smell it? That smells amazing, doesn't it? Okay, I think we're at about a half teaspoon there, yeah? And then we're gonna follow that up with one of my other favorite ingredients to grind fresh, and that is nutmeg. Trust me, folks, do not buy pre-ground nutmeg. Buy the fresh nut, grind it yourself. Wait till you smell this. So 
that's about a quarter teaspoon. It's not that. And then uh -huh. ice. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna just whisk this together and then we're gonna add how much flour? Three cups. All right, so one cup at a time so that we don't uh, overwhelm the arm of our stirrer here. We're gonna slowly add in all purpose flour. So go ahead and whisk that in, and then you'll probably want to switch over to the spoon once it starts to get too thick. But the idea here is just to really incorporate the flour, the, the dry ingredient, into all of that wet. How did you hear about this cake? Mom's friend. Your mom's friend? Yes. Are they from Louisiana? No. All right, are you ready for the final cup of flour? Yeah. It's starting to get kind of heavy, isn't it? Yes. All right. Well, now we're just going to add to your challenge. And I think at some point you're probably just going to give up on a spoon and start using your hands, right? Yes. That's what I kind of figured. All right. So we'll let uh, our stir master here keep working on this. And when we get to the point where she's gonna bring it out onto the board, we'll show you what happens next. All right, so I took over on the uh, mixing here because it got to the point that the wooden spoon wasn't doing very much. So we get it to about this point where it's basically a crumbly dough. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn it out onto our cutting board here. Um, I don't think we're going to need to really add any flour because it's already pretty dry. So we're going to turn it all out onto our workstation. Turn that in the sink for me. Thank you so much. And we're just going to keep working this dough, kneading it until we get all of those glutens to work together. So you get a nice, smooth, dense dough, kind of like a pizza dough. And uh, when I get it to that point, We'll show you what to do next, but for now, it's kneading time. Well, if you can see what she's doing, she's basically just kind of folding it over itself and then pushing it down and then folding it over itself and pushing it down. And you can see how it's smoothing out nicely. It's a little, little work on the forearms, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but this is the old fashioned way of doing it. So we want to do this by hand for about 10 minutes. Now, if we were doing this in a stand mixer, if you have your KitchenAid stand mixer, you can do this in there with a the dough hook attachment for about five minutes on medium speed. And you get to the same place, but we're old school here. We're doing it the hard way. One more time, give it a couple more good kneads here, and then we're gonna kind of roll this up into a taut ball. So for that, we're gonna kind of just tuck it under itself over and over. You see it's still, it's a little bit tacky, but not so wet that you can't handle it. This is actually about the perfect consistency that we want. So once we get it rolled up into a nice ball, we're going to put it into a greased bowl. Sorry. And we're gonna cover this kit up with my least favorite stuff in the world. which is this cling wrap saran plastic. Good God, I hate this stuff. Just because you can't see through it doesn't mean it won't work. All right. We knew there'd be an easier way. Thank you, press and seal. I need to sharpen that cutter on there. And then I'm gonna do one more because we don't want any air getting in there. So this is going to rest for an hour and it should about double in size, right? So when we get to where there's about five minutes left, Jesus, even this shit doesn't work. Well, that one didn't seal because you didn't press it. Son of a bitch. Uh, when we get to where there's about five to 10 minutes left, we will start to make the filling for this king cake. Okay, so we're in the final five, 10 minutes or so of letting our dough rise. We're gonna start making the filling for this. And we're gonna start off with a half stick of butter, uh, which is four tablespoons. To that, we're gonna add two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. We're using light brown sugar. If you like the more molasses flavor, you can use dark brown sugar. Either way it works, we're gonna go ahead and use the itty bitty whisk. 
to start whisking that together. To that, we're gonna add a pinch of kosher salt. And then just like with the cake itself, we're gonna season it up with some cinnamon and some nutmeg. So while she's whisking there, I will come in and grind some cinnamon in there. Say when. Oh my God, it smells so good. When? When? Okay. And then, and again, folks, you can obviously buy the pre-ground stuff, but if you really want the flavor, grate it yourself fresh. Whole nutmeg, whole cinnamon sticks, a microplane, that's all you need. It smells amazing. Okay. Go ahead and whisk that until everything is thoroughly combined. That is gonna be the filling. Okay, so after an hour, our dough has risen, and now we just wanna roll this stuff out. So we'll take this beautiful, oh, it's very nice, very nice. I've very lightly floured my work surface just so that nothing sticks. I'll throw that in the sink for me. Thank you, assistant. All right, so I've rolled this out. We're looking for about a half inch thickness, maybe a little bit less. Just try to get it as even as you can. Um, it is still kind of puffing up in spots as I've been rolling. So we want to just try and get it as even as we possibly can. Make sure that middle is nice and rolled out. And then, what's the next step? We got our filling. Out of the itty bitty whisk as we can. And the rest is for me. You're doing a good job, doing a good job. All right, let's get the rest of this out of the bowl. And then we just kind of want to, almost like you're painting. Almost like uh, Mr. Miyagi is saying, paint the fence. Was that side to side or was that up and down? No, that was up the and house down. Was side That's, side the side house side. was side to side, yes. Side to side, side to side. So if you got some thicker spots here, Feel free to borrow some from the thicker spots to spread out to the other spots. So we can get a nice, even coating across the whole thing. And once we're there, we'll show you what happens next. So once you've got it mostly evenly spread out, and believe me, as you're doing this, it's gonna feel like you don't have enough filling, get it a nice, even layer like this. You don't want chunks of filling in there. So now we're just gonna roll it up. We're gonna roll it up like a dog, like a dog, like a dog. <laughs> Like Snoop Dogg rolls. <laughs> We're going to roll it up like Snoop Dogg rolls. No, no, this is a kid's show. Come on. Family show. Uh, as you're rolling, kind of stretch it out a little bit because you're going to notice that in the middle, it's going to start to puff up. And you want to keep this as even as you possibly can. So every time you roll, just kind of stretch it out a little bit from the middle and just work your way to those edges. Be careful not to break the dough. You can see a couple little cracks in there, that's fine. But we want it as evenly as possible as we create this beautiful dough log. So take your time, take your time. Kind of crimp that dough outward as you're rolling. Because you can see it's, it's thickening up in the middle. And once we're there, you have a nice little dough log that now we can start to stretch out and make it a little bit thinner. Again, just basically looking for even distribution. You don't want a big puffy center in these thin little sides. So you can see I'm just kind of stretching it out as I go here. 
And that's about what you're looking for. Cutting this long, oh man. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. This just got fun. This just got really fun. Okay, well then it's a good thing I didn't grab my bench cutter. Should I use a pizza cutter for this? Maybe. I think a pizza cutter Maybe. might be, might be what we need to use here. See? Yeah. We're all learning new things on All American Cooking today. Hey, by the way, if you've gotten this far into the video and you're excited about what you're seeing or you want to see more things like this, hit that subscribe button. Helps this channel tremendously, costs you nothing. So we're going right up and down the middle, correct? All right, so I'm not very good at this part, but we'll see how this goes. I'm trying to keep this as even as we can. I don't have my laser guided pizza cutter with me, so hopefully this is enough in the middle to do what we need to do. And how does that look? Does that look fairly even? Yeah. Yes. Well, all right. Are you ready to braid? Yes. Let's let the child braid, shall we? So now we want to mention that we want that cut side to stay up as you're braiding this. That is one of the most important parts of this, is to keep that cut side up. And then after you twist it, you see she's forming a nice little circular kind of a shape. Ish. Ish. A ring. A ring, if you will. Okay, so after my sister has come in and helped straighten this out a little bit more, it looks nice and pretty. We're gonna transfer over to a parchment lined baking sheet. Really ruined your connection there, sorry. And then we are going to, oh God, guess what we're gonna do? Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> Supposedly this is gonna work better now. Can I get uh, can I get some hands for assistance here? How many people does it take to bake a cake? I tell you. I hope that our viewers appreciate all the time and effort and struggle and frustration and sweat and tears going into this. Just the saran wrap part alone. The rest of it's easy. Okay, we're good. All right, so that's gonna sit for an hour and rise and then uh, the fun stuff happens. Okay, it's been another hour. Our cake has, well, our dough uh, star ring here has risen beautifully. So a couple more steps here. There is a tail that goes with the king cake and it involves a little plastic baby. So we're going to insert this little plastic baby just randomly somewhere in this dough and kind of tuck him in there so we can't see where he's at or she. It's, it's one or the other, right? God, don't get me started. Okay. Um, and the, the idea of this, the, um, the person who gets that slice, that gets this little plastic baby in there, has luck and prosperity for the rest of the year. So now that our baby is in our cake, uh, this is just one beaten egg with a little bit of water, your basic egg wash. So we're just gonna brush this over this whole thing, give it a nice golden brown color. So my oven is set at 350 degrees. As soon as I finish egg washing this, it will go into the oven till about, for what, 30, 35 minutes? Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah, 30, 35 minutes. Um, so as soon as I finish the egg wash, we put it in the oven, we'll bake it, we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so while our cake is in the oven, we're gonna make a glaze to go on top. I've got a cup and a half approximately of powdered sugar. To that, we're gonna add about two to three tablespoons of milk. If we need more, we can always add a little bit more. There's about one, there's about two. And there's about three, and we will whisk to combine to make it a nice glaze. I know you're looking at this going, holy shnikey, that looks like a lot. But watch how quickly the sugar dissolves into the milk as you whisk it with our favorite itty bitty whisk. So once I get this whisked and creamy, the cake will be coming out shortly. 
and then we will finish decorating and get our first piece. And after 35 minutes, there is our glorious king cake. About five minutes, I'll start glazing this up, then we'll finish decorating. You'll see the final product in a few minutes. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. The cake is still warm, but not as piping hot, so we can start to spoon over our beautiful glaze. And then as I'm glazing this, this cake gets three different colors of sugar. We have purple, which is supposed to symbolize justice. We have green, which symbolizes growth. And then gold, which symbolizes prosperity and wealth. So I will finish up this last little bit of the glaze here. Puppies are getting excited even though you do not want to give this to the puppies. But they're getting excited because I'll tell you what, it smells amazing in this kitchen. Okay, so the glaze has been applied and Rhiannon will now sprinkle the sugars in artistic fashion. Purple for justice, green for growth. All right, it is time to cut this thing. Where would you like me to cut? Purple. You want the purple? All right, so you're going to get this section of purple over here. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can cut. Hopefully, I don't decapitate a baby. Taste, and then I will give my taste of cut it in the section here. What do you think? It tastes good. Okay. That's it? Just taste good? It tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> She's, uh, yeah, she, brevity is her strength. It's not mine. She gets it all out in one word. It does. It tastes good. All right. So... There's my slice there. We did not find the baby yet, so no prosperity for any of us. But let me uh, take a bite here. All right. Happy Mardi Gras, folks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to this channel, please. It really helps me out a bunch. We'll see you next time on All American Cooking. Mmm. 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 -hmm. The nutmeg, the cinnamon. That's really good. It's nice and moist. Mm -hmm. And there it is, big baby brother. Gets the little purple baby. You got the little purple baby. So that would be justice for the rest of the year for you. Well, and prosperity and all that good stuff. So congratulations and happy Mardi Gras. Well, thank you.